Our fighter bomber boys, including the 57th group of Cape Bone fame, were about to sweep a road to Tunis. We were using the experience gained in Egypt, smashing Rommel at El Alamein. Then we were only a few. Now we were hundreds, all grouped in a powerful package. General Alexander's armies were anxious for the air attack, which would mean a breakthrough. They didn't have long to wait. We blasted the channel from Medjus El Fab to Tunis. In two hours, Tanks and infantry had advanced as much as a mile. Resistance began to crack. Firebombs, which we had tested in the Sahara, helped in the big show. realizing their desperate situation, retreated to make a last-ditch stand. Finally, the Allied armies broke through. From here on, Alexander mopped up with fire. At last, the Allies could see Tunis. This was the first flush of victory, a year and a half after Pearl Harbor, only six months after the landing. Allied soldiers, tankmen, and airmen were liberators, like the American Marines who had brought peace to North Africa more than a century before. There were salutes to liberty as tyranny disappeared. The citizens of Tunis cheered the crusade for freedom that now had a new champion, Allied air power. In the air war against the European Axis, you will see the Army Air Force's successful campaign of daylight strategic precision bombardment. In separate chapters, the Air Force story dramatizes in detail the great missions to Schweinfurt, Marienburg, and Palesti against the fiercest aerial opposition in the world. destroyed the enemy's ability to wage war and her will to fight. You will see America's striking force leap over battle lines to smash the heart of the enemy's war machine. From the beginning, these shocks grew in intensity, continuing almost daily until we achieved unconditional surrender. Three men had dedicated their lives to destroy the industrial fabric of an enemy nation to save our way of life. Then there's the story of the super force. From the building of the B-29, you will travel the long sky road to Tokyo. The air plan, preparing the third Axis partner for invasion, called for bases in China and the Pacific Islands. The strategy was to advance air power to the point where the full fury of crushing air attacks would help bring about the defeat of Japan. But Japan could not defend her home islands from the inferno. We paralyzed her industry. Before the atomic bomb, before the Soviet entry in the war, Japan was a vanquished nation. No invasion was necessary. With dramatic suddenness, the war skidded to a stop and surrender ceremonies aboard the mighty Mo. Without being invaded, without losing a foot of homeland, Japan was surely and utterly defeated. Victory over Japan punctuated the primary lesson of World War II, that absolute control of the air by peace-loving and united nations is essential in avoiding another global conflict. America was not prepared for World War II. Yes, we won, but at a terrific cost. 
At times, the margin of winning was narrow. History alone can reveal how many turning points, how many times we were near losing. The Air Force story will show defeats as well as successes. It goes beyond VE Day, to the age of jets, the Berlin Airlift, Korea, and the airmen and airplanes of tomorrow. The sacred record has been preserved. Visual history has shown us some of the courageous men in uniform and out who cradled the dream of flight and gave us aviation. In the history-making jobs that lay ahead is the inspiring chronicle of more Americans who continued the pioneer spirit. Men with an idea who planned and worked and fought to build the greatest striking force and protective power in history, the United States Air Force.